Hello everyone and welcome to .NET Core Central. In today's video, I am going to demonstrate how we can use Amazon step functions to create an orchestration for calling multiple serverless microservices in AWS. Step function is a way to orchestrate microservices, which inherently means we can use it for distributed transaction for Saga pattern. Few weeks back, I did a video on Saga pattern on how to manage distributed transaction. And for Saga pattern, one of the implementation is orchestration. And as the name suggests, orchestration implementation, there is a centralized orchestrator. And the orchestrator tells each microservices which operation to perform. And in case of issue, it also send messages to different microservices for rollback of transaction. And it manages state of each of the tasks through a state machine. So as you can see in a Saga orchestration pattern, we essentially need to use an orchestrator, which is also a state machine. And if we go back to the step function, and as you can see for the step function definition, AWS step function is a serverless function orchestrator that makes it easy to sequence AWS Lambda function and multiple AWS services into a business critical application. Through its virtual interface, you can create and run a series of checkpointed and event-driven workflow that maintains the application state. And as you can see, when we create a step function, we are essentially creating a state machine. And the state machine is nothing but an orchestrator which orchestrate multiple microservices. So in today's example, I'm going to take a very simple scenario. And the scenario is we'll create a step function state machine where we will be executing two lambda and I already created two lambda function. One is a create product function and another one is a get product SKU. Create product function lambda as the name suggests it gets a product object as an input and then using the product creator here it creates the product information in a DynamoDB table named product table and this is the DynamoDB product table which is empty right now and the other function which is get product SKU is a function here which is again a very simple function it also gets the product as an input and from the product using the product name it finds the SKU information from a text file and returns that back and in the process it logs the data in CloudWatch and for the time being, I just created this 123ABC456XYZ as a product SKU and the product name is bottle. So bottle.txt is what is going to be available in S3. And if I go to the S3 bucket, the test bucket.net core central, I can see the product.txt is what I uploaded. So as simple as that, two lambda function, one to create a product information in product table and the other to read the product SKU from the test bucket inside of an S3. So now let's start with step function. So I'm going to create a state machine and I'm going to use the standard template. And as you can see, the step function comes with a workflow studio, which is an extremely easy to use drag and drop user interface. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to invoke a Lambda function. And here I'm going to use the create product. I'm going to change the state name to create product. And then here use the state input as payload, meaning whatever input is given to the state machine will be the input for that Lambda function, which means we are going to give the product object as an input to the state function so that it can follow through to the next Lambda. And then right now after invoking it ends. So I'm going to invoke another Lambda here. And this time I'm going to select get product SKU as the Lambda function. And I'm going to change the name here to get product SKU and uh, the input will be the state input you can change the input to enter a payload or nothing but we are going to use the state payload here and then finally the end state now as you can see from the left hand side from the actions you have invoke lambda you can invoke an sns you can run an ECS task. You can start another step function. 
and then there are a couple of AWS glue related features that you can do essentially running jobs there and then there are a bunch of other features like executing a request in API gateway some queries you can run on Athena you can execute the cold build process and this is very interesting that you can directly access some data from the DynamoDB tables you can get data you can put data update delete directly into DynamoDB and you can also execute some function of EKS which is Elastic Kubernetes Services and then some other job in EMR then you know few other job here and you can send a message to SQS as well and when it comes to flow you have multiple option for example you can introduce a wait between the step function let's say let's introduce one second wait between these two step function you can also do some stuff in parallel you can transform the data so if we introduce something here so as you can see this is a very useful step where you can do transformation so here as you can see you can transform the input itself using some filter operation with input path or transform the input and same thing you can do with the output and in the output you can combine input and the result using a result path or filter output with output path and if you click on the info here you can see an example for example if this is the result you can use dollar dot the property name to access the property from the JSON and so on and so forth so this is a very handy feature but we are not going to use it we're just going to use a wait and then similarly there is a map function which adds a for each loop and then finally success which stops and marks as success and failure stops and marks and failure and this can be based on a condition based on a choice basically so you can say if this or that and here you can put in as failure here you can put in as success so based on certain condition you can do so here in the choice you can define your rules and based on that you can have success or failure again we are not going to deal with it we're just going to have a simple workflow where we're going to create wait and then get product SKU and then end so but I it goes to show you how many options you have in terms of the actions as well as workflow and to be honest using lambda and step functions there are a lot of complex business solution can be built out now let me do next and this is where it shows the code you can see this is how the code looks like and then if we do next and I'm going to keep the name as product state machine I'm going to create a new execution role I'm going to turn on the logging for all so that we can see what is getting logged and this is how it will create a CloudWatch log group and then finally I'm going to click on create state machine and it's going to take few seconds to create the state machine the state machine successfully created and successfully created a new CloudWatch log group so if I go to CloudWatch apart from the two lambda function I'll see another log group for the product state machine now let's go back to step function and let's start the execution and for the execution if you remember we need to pass the product object in JSON format and the product object has name quantity and price so I'm just going to pass it here so name I'm going to use bottle because if you remember that is the product SKU file I have here the quantity is one and price is also one let's start the execution and when we start the execution we can see the event history here so task date entered task scheduled task started task succeeded and then it went into wait state and then after that it went into product SKU task and finally execution succeeded and you can see every step is green which indicates it's a success 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 otherwise we would have seen a failure along with an error now if I go into CloudWatch I click on this I can go into this log and we can see the detail of each and every step is listed here along with the payload and then if I go into the create product I can see create product is also successful and similarly if I go into get product SKU I can see get product SKU is also successful it has logged the data which is the SKU ID as for this notepad and now if I go to DynamoDB table I can see the bottle product is created 
So as you can see, it was only with few click of buttons, we could create a microservices orchestration using .NET Core Lambda functions and AWS State Machine. And as I mentioned earlier, State Machine is extremely powerful and there is a lot of thing we can do. Again, I'll open the Workflow Studio and as you can see, there's a lot of action which can be performed as a part of State Machine. But of course, doing it through Lambda gives more control to you on what you want to do. So I personally would prefer executing Lambda as a part of step function rather than going really fancy and getting into like creating TanamoDB data and things like that. I'll just stick to Lambda. And in terms of flow, as you can see, these are very useful flow. For example, parallel is extremely useful. Let's say you got a callback and you want to add product and the user information and it makes sense to call them in parallel, then you can add the parallel step. Choice is another thing which is very useful. So is the pass or which is basically a transformation step for the request and response. So that is all I wanted to cover today. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you are new to my channel, if you think you are getting value out of my channel, please subscribe to my channel. And thanks so much for watching this video.